Today we're going to solve quadratics by factoring. So what do I mean when I say solve quadratics? That means we're going to solve for the value of x, but we're solving for the value of x when y is zero. So what does that look like on a graph? I really like to start off my solving quadratics by factoring with this visual. Solutions to a quadratic equation are the x-intercepts, right? Why would I say that? Because the x-intercepts are when y is zero. These are the points at which the y value is equal to zero. So we can also call uh, these solutions different names, right? So we can say that these x-intercepts, when you're solving, you're solving for the solutions. You're solving for the roots. What are the roots of the quadratic? That means solve it, right? Solve for the x-intercepts. What are the zeros of the quadratic? What are the x-intercepts of the quadratic? So anytime you're given a question, it says what are the solutions, what are the roots, what are the zeros, what are the x-intercepts? They all mean the same thing. Let's move on to the types of solutions. Now this is for Algebra 2, it's different in Algebra 1. There are, when you're solving for, when you're solving a quadratic, you can have two real solutions. So what would that look like if you graphed that quadratic on a coordinate plane? It would look maybe something like this. You have two x-intercepts, you have two real solutions. Well, what if you have something that looks like this, where your vertex is actually on the x-axis, right? Here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. If you wanna label that, you can. What, what does that look like? That's one solution, but we call it a double root. This is called a double root bounce. Okay, so when you only have like one solution, that means that that's the vertex of your parabola, right? So it's a double root bounce. And then you can have two complex solutions. So in Algebra 1, we say that you can have two solutions, one solution, or zero solutions. In Algebra 2, that zero solutions might look something like that. But it actually has two complex solutions. So this is really the big difference between Algebra 1 quadratics and Algebra 2 quadratics. You can have two complex solutions. So that's really what I want to talk about is you, each of these has two roots, right? This will have two real solutions, one solution, that's a double root bounce, and then two complex solutions. Okay, so we can solve quadratic equations using several methods. Today we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring and the steps that we're going to use to solve, and you can refer to these as we move on to the next several problems. You're going to set the equation equal to zero, so you're going to move all the terms to one side. You're going to factor it, so you have to be really good at factoring, and then you're going to set each factor equal to zero and solve for the variable. Now, why do we do that? We do that because of the zero product property. The zero product property states that if x times y equals zero, then either x equals zero or y equals zero, or they both equal zero. Okay, so if you think about it, if I have three times some number equals zero, what must that number be? It must be zero. What if I have three times x minus two equals zero? That means x minus two must equal zero. So when I have a product of zero, that means one of the factors equals zero or they both equal zero. So let's put this into practice. Okay, well let's look at example number one. I have x squared plus x equals 12. Step one tells me that I need to move all terms to one side. So I'm gonna move this 12, this constant, to the left side of my equation. How do I do that? I subtract 12 from both sides and I end up with an equation that looks like this. And now I have just this basic trinomial and I'm gonna factor it. If you need to pause the video to factor it now, I would suggest doing that, but I know that two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add or have a sum of positive one or positive four and negative three. So my factors are x plus four times x minus three equals zero. So Remember, when you have like, this is a binomial factor. This is a binomial factor. So if I have these two factors, 
multiply together, right? And that equals zero. The zero product property tells me that either x plus four equals zero or x minus three equals zero. And then you just solve for x, right? So how do I solve for x here? Subtract four from both sides. x equals negative four. Or add three to both sides. x equals positive three. So my solutions are negative four or positive three. And you can write that like this, right? Roster notation. I'm making a list. I do these fancy brackets. Negative four, comma three. These are my solutions. So you can write your answer either this way or this way. I typically like it this way. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two, we're doing the same thing, okay? We're going to move all my terms to one side. So this negative seven X, I'm gonna move it to the other side by adding seven X to both sides. And I'm gonna write it um, in standard form. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to set that quadratic equal to 0, right? Quadratic equation would be equal to y. I'm looking for the x-intercept, which is when y is 0. So I replace y with 0. And now I'm going to factor this. This is a trinomial when a is not 1. So I would encourage you to pause the video and do this now. And I'm going to do this using my slide and divide method. So x squared plus 7x, 2 times 6 is 12. Two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7 are 3 and 4. So x plus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. And then what I multiplied in, which is that 2, I'm going to divide out. Simplify this. 2x plus 3, I can simplify this to be 2 times x plus two equals zero. So now I have my two factors and I'm gonna set each of these factors equal to zero. If two x plus three times x plus two equals zero, that means two x plus three equals zero or x plus two equals zero. And then we're just gonna solve for x. This is a basic two-step equation. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides and then divide by two negative 3 over 2, or I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 2. So how else can I write this? I can write it like that, or I can write it as a list. x can equal negative 2 or negative 3 over 2. Let's move on to the next one, example number 3. In example number 3, I do not have um, a C term, right? I don't have a trinomial. This is just uh, two terms. How can you factor two terms? Um, it's not a difference of squares. I can factor out a GCF. So let's factor out a GCF of these two terms. 6x squared and minus 15x, my GCF is gonna be 3x. So I'm gonna divide a 3x out of each term. When I divide it out of that first term, I'm left with 2x minus, divided out of that second term, 5 equals 0. And these are my two factors. This is a factor, and this binomial is a factor, which means 3x is going to equal 0, or 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. So let's do that um, in this first equation that we have set up. If I divide anything, zero divided by anything right is just zero, so x equals zero. Remember, you cannot have zero in your denominator. Or I'm gonna solve this basic two-step equation by adding five to both sides. I get two x equals five. Divide by two, and I get x equals five over two. So how else can I write that? So or, right, you can also write that like this, x equals zero or five over two, right? Which is just 2.5. So, and you could write it that as well, right? 2.5. Let's move on to example number four. Example number four. Okay, I've got some things going on here. I've got two ter one term on the left, that's my uh, two x squared, two terms on the right, 
I can tell you that when I am kind of moving these terms around on either side of the equal sign, I like to have a positive A term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 8x and add 8 to both sides. So when I do that, I get 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 equals 0. So what's the first thing that you should always do when you're factoring? You should always factor out a GCF first, if possible. Always, always, always do that. And I can do that in this particular example. I can factor out a 2. When I factor out a 2, I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And that's really awesome because now I have a basic trinomial. And I need two numbers that multiply to positive 4 and add to negative 4. What are those numbers? Negative 2 and negative 2. So my factors look like this. x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. So if I wanted to rewrite this, I could write it as 2 times x minus 2 squared equals 0. So now we're getting to the point where students go, okay, so what do I set equal to zero? Do I set this two equal to zero? You would only set that monomial that you factored out as a GCF equal to zero if it had an X attached to it. Okay, if it's just a number, you're not gonna worry about it. Just leave it. But my factors are X minus two times X minus two. Well, I'm not going to set up two equations. They're the exact same equation. I'm just going to set up x minus 2 equal to 0. And let's solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I get x equals 2. What does that mean? I only have one solution right here. Right? I have one solution, but this is that example where there's a double root bounce. Okay? There's a double root bounce here. So what does that tell me? That tells me that this 2 is the vertex of my quadratic, right? 2, 0, that's the vertex. It's going to bounce off the x-intercept right there. And uh, that's what it would look like if I graphed it. And let's move on to our very last example. And this is an example where I don't have a b term, okay? I have an x squared, and then I have a constant. 4x squared minus 25 equals 0. So is there another way to solve this? We'll actually solve it the way, um, the way we've been doing in the last four examples, and then I'm gonna show you another way to solve it. So we're gonna factor this, all right? 4x squared minus 25, that's actually a difference of squares. So how does that factor? 2x plus five times 2x minus five equals zero. And I've got my factors, so let's set each factor equal to zero. 2x plus 5 equals 0, or 2x minus 5 equals 0. And then we're going to solve for x. So if I subtract 5 and then divide by 2, I get x equals negative 5 over 2. And then if I add 5 and divide by 2, I get x equals positive 5 over 2. So those are my two solutions, right? x equals negative 5 over 2 positive 5 over 2, right? X could be either of those. What would be another way that I could solve this? And I'm going to change colors here. Another way that you could solve this when you don't have that B term is you could solve using square roots. And here are the steps that you're going to take to do that. You're going to isolate X squared. So I've got 4X squared minus 25 equals 0. I'm going to isolate x squared. Well, how do I do that? I'm going to get rid of this constant, so I'm going to add 25 to both sides. I get 4x squared equals 25. And then I'm going to isolate x squared, so now I need to divide both sides by 4. And I end up with something like this, 25 over 4. When you have x equals, right, x equals whatever you're talking about, what about when you have x squared? How do you undo that square? I take the square root of both sides. X equals, the thing is, when you take the square root of both sides, when you're undoing that square, um, when you're undoing that square in an equation, your answer is positive or negative. 
Okay, if I just ask you to like simplify a square root, I'm looking for the principal square root. That's always positive. But if I'm solving an equation and you have to use that square root to undo the, the square, then it's positive or negative every time. And this is one of those situations where I have a perfect square in my numerator and my denominator. So I'm going to take the square root of each. Square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. And that's my answer. And I get the same thing, right? So these, it's the same thing. You get the same answer. There's just two ways to solve this. And you can use whatever way works for you. If I see I don't have a BX term, I always use this method over here. Okay, so that concludes your notes over solving quadratic equations by factoring. I hope it was helpful.